And number six. There's always quite a store at Applebee's uh, when they call, you two, party of four. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, episode 354. Uh, we're into the third week now of November of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. You ever get tired of being right? <laughs> I don't. What, 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 what could you possibly be referring to? Was it when... Uh, uh, famed wrestling prodigy uh, <laughs> and current United States heavyweight champion uh, Logan Paul uh, let the world in on the secret that it was his fault that Rey Mysterio almost died. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. To answer your question, no. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. I wish. I wish more people would pay attention <laughs> to the track record. <laughs> I think between the two of them, I'm not saying we're both always right. I'm not saying I'm always right. But pretty consistently, one of us has the correct opinion on whatever is going on in wrestling. I think it's safe to say. We agree on like 80% of things anyway. Sure. Maybe sure. 90%. We agree on pretty much everything except the AEW stuff. Yes. And then, um, yeah. So on those instances where we disagree... One of us is right. Correct. <laughs> Costume feels good. <laughs> so WWE Survivor Series is coming up next week. They only have uh, three matches uh, set for that show so far. And they are the same three matches as when we previewed the show oh. last time. So uh, the only uh, intrigue that they've kind of added since then oh is that uh, Drew McIntyre uh, hit uh, uh, Cody or uh, Jey Uso, I forget which, with a Claymore kick on Raw Mm -hmm. and uh, shook hands with uh, Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Drew, um, who thinks that subtext is for cowards and wears his, uh, has been wearing a black tank top for the last three months on TV while they uh, uh, pretend to uh, uh, get prepared to turn him has, uh, has finally turned it seems. And uh, I would assume that he's going to be a fifth added to the, uh, to the men's war games match on the judgment day team. Mm-hmm. They finally let uh, the little, the little guy, uh, the little fellow with the big head, uh, <laughs> JD McDonough. They finally let him in the judgment day officially. So if they add Drew to this match here on Monday, it's going to be five on one side, and the baby faces still have Seth, Cody, Jey Uso, and Sam Sam Zayn. So there's one empty spot on that side, and that could be Randall Orton, or it could be Charles Montgomery Punk, <laughs> or it could be Kevin Owens, who is given a storyline suspension from SmackDown. They've left themselves a uh, a lot of openings here, but just uh, any thoughts on the Survivor Series build this week as uh, it, uneventful as it was? Yeah, not too much. The only other thing I would uh, would add is on uh, we've seems like we're getting a women's war games too. It wasn't necessarily crystal clear, or I guess what the teams would be, but you pretty much have your heel team now. Yeah, and uh, and as we continue the march between whatever's going to happen with Bailey and. Uh, and Dakota with EO, who now has uh, aligned with a, f- a few of her country women. And uh, then I, obviously Bianca would be on the babyface team, probably with Charlotte and Shotzi and ooh, whoever else they can dig up. I guess Becky probably, just because what else is she going to do on the show? Becky was, so, is, was planned at one point to be the other. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, you'll get your two War Games matches and... I mean, between the video packages and the commercials for uh, Tostino's pizza rolls or whatever Nick Khan gets uh, set up <laughs> for the 
to uh, to sponsor the matches. That's like a good two and a half hours of pay-per-view time right there. So uh, what else? I mean, what do you need? Like two more matches? You know, mid-card title match nobody cares about. And I don't know. One one or two other quick things to do uh, to do between. You probably open with a war games and close with a war games. So yeah, we're looking at a five batch card probably, right? I mean, especially because yeah. both those war games matches, the women's will probably go a half hour and the men's will go forty five minutes. So mm-hmm. you have plenty of plenty of con- content there to fill your show. Absolutely, great news for fans of content. Oh yeah, there will be plenty. We love it, don't we, folks? Uh, so there's there's two potential big uh, um, comebacks uh, here at the at Survivor Series, mm-hmm. and uh, it's Randy Orton, which is heavily uh, rumored, and then there's just always the hey, is uh, is is uh, is Phil gonna come back? Mm-hmm. And they've. Um, you know, Shinsuke and Nakamura is talking about somebody in these promos. And uh, I feel like they have given themselves an opening where they're planning on it. And they've left themselves plausible deniability if it uh, if it falls through. Um, I am probably 5149 that Phil is going to be there. What do you think? Yeah, around the time Nakamura started doing the go to sleep, it's like, well, Kent is not coming in, I don't think. So, yeah. Um, and yes, he's he's challenging someone who is not there currently. And so you figure Randy Orton coming back and joining the babyface team uh, makes makes sense. And uh, for war games, and then that would that would lead you to still need somebody for Nakamura to wrestle. And obviously they don't Nakamura is a guy that has a little bit of because of his entrance. um, And because he was a good wrestler 10 years ago, uh, he has a little bit of uh, credit with the audience. So he's a guy that can be a good, you know, first opponent for returning punk um, or I guess returning Orton. If you, if you flip him, but they're in Chicago. Um, if they don't expressly announce who the two people, who the two mystery men are before that show, people are certainly going to think he's one of them. So again, uh, WWE fans don't really like hijack shows anymore, but I would suspect we might hear some chance for him. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Yep. And uh, if uh, negotiations fall through, well, you got Owens for one of the spots, mm-hmm. and uh, you got Orton for the other. So, yeah. you know, I, no one's willing to, uh, no one's really willing to put themselves on the line for this. <laughs> this yep. predict this prediction. It's like, well, they could do it or they could not do it. Plans change all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I just got a feeling that they're that they're trying. I don't know. If there was only one mystery spot on the show, <laughs> I feel like you could you could maybe assume it's Orton until proven otherwise. But the fact that there's two, to your point, uh, would mean that you have to have another surprise. And like if it's a guy from NXT or something, um, that's not something I feel like you draw out over a month. <laughs> to build up so uh, like I said they're certainly setting you up like you said to to think it's a very strong possibility he could show up without saying it which is they're not nearly as heavy but they're not doing it as you know as heavy handedly as AEW did when they were not announcing that he was coming in in 2021 so they've definitely left themselves a little bit more wiggle room yes um yeah, so that's kind of what's going on with WWE. Uh, LA Knight is wrestling Jim Uso on <laughs> SmackDown this week, which goes head to head with a Friday night episode of AEW Collision at 8 p.m. I don't know why no one's talking about this. <laughs> I mean, I think it's because AEW is going to get killed. Sure. Going head to head, not killed, 
they're going to do okay in the demo. They're going to get killed in total viewers. Right. Their demo uh, will probably be largely unchanged <laughs> because Collision doesn't do great when it's unopposed. Yeah. It was for a good, the first um, four months of the show, it was, it's going to do okay unless it's on the WWE. It goes head to head with the WWE pay per view. Mm. And then it was, well, it's going to do okay. Unless it's on the same day as the WWE pay per view, mm-hmm. and then this past weekend, there was no WWE pay per view, mm-hmm. and they had Sting and the Radar Superstar Adam Copeland in the main event, and they didn't crack four hundred thousand viewers. So Are you telling me that Adam Copeland is not a rating straw because that is shocking news. As we tape this here late on a Thursday night, I am going to be so amused. If Adam Copeland gets into the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame this week of all weeks, <laughs> well, I feel like I am overly negative. The first half of his career was quite enjoyable. But, yeah, man, there's a lot to make fun of. <laughs> it's not even that I dis. I don't like feel. There's things about him that I hate. Uh, his current <laughs> his current television persona, I should say, not him personally. I don't know him personally. Uh, but uh, I don't I don't hate him, but it's just like, God, there's so many things to make fun of with this guy. <laughs> yeah. like, he's so much fun to make fun of. And uh, and that's why. Uh, plus, he's friends with Dax Harwood. So, he, you know, he can't be that good of a guy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Character assassination. Guilt by association. I. You know what? Here's what I know about Adam Copeland. <laughs> I know that uh, there was a time in his life where he didn't take his marriage vows very seriously. Correct. The institution of marriage, the uh, relationship, boundaries of relationships meant nothing to him. Mm-hmm. Also heard, he's a family guy. Good family man. Yeah. So that's what we but know. Regardless. Yeah. I-, I imagine any real stars, especially after... Sting and uh, and Edge and whoever didn't draw last week unopposed. Uh, as we've seen, not a lot of uh, star power on that Collision show. Um, uh, it seems like I don't I don't think we're gonna see Jericho or or uh, you know any of those guys make an appearance during those two hours. Maybe they pop up on the Rampage that airs right after it, but uh, I don't think we're seeing them on the uh, on the uh, on the Collision show. No. Oh. So, um, Collision and Rampage live back to back this week, leading into a Saturday AEW pay per view. Oh boy! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tony did a uh, conference call this week. Uh, his traditional um, media call before the pay per view, which will be followed by his traditional media scrum. The guy just loves talking to the media. But not, on the, he doesn't love answering questions. No, that's problematic. Loves talking to reporters, doesn't like answering any of their questions. It's an interesting uh, tightrope he walks. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty weird. Um, so uh, uh, I forget where I was going with this. It doesn't matter. Three hours uh, on Friday night of AEW, and then four if you count the countdown special that airs at eleven. Them, that might only be 30 minutes, but you're right. I forgot about that. Um, I think the last one was only 30 minutes. Okay, three and a I, half, we'll say. To be yeah, safe. yeah. I forgot that that uh, I made this mistake yesterday also thinking about this. <laughs> they have a, a, a nearly four-hour block on TNT on Friday night. The fact that neither side has loaded up their cards for Friday night is kind of insane to me as we just spent some time talking about mm-hmm. but uh it's, there's st- it's just because the nxt aew showdown of a of last month fame was <laughs> like so personal yes <laughs> it was so paul levesque and sean were so were so adamant about beating aew head to head that they brought out the the undertaker and john cena to do it Yes. Even though I'm pretty, I think they probably would have won anyway. We'll never know, but, um, or at least it would have been close. 
Um, maybe I think it would maybe AEW would have won the demo or whatever. But um, so, but this time, yes, they don't uh, they don't seem to care. Which to me, I feel like that's exactly what I, what you would do if you were WWE. If you were what WWE always claims, which is they don't care. And everything's our competition. Every network, every television show is our competition. Bleep. So, so, so yes, so we don't uh, we don't we don't load up just for the to, to combat the other wrestling show. Then that's that's what I would do, right? Just just do your regular show. It's your time slot. You're you were like the most watched show on network television last week. <laughs> uh, in that time slot, so. Like just, just, just do your thing. But yes, on the AEW side, if you're trying to crack, I don't know, two hundred and fifty thousand viewers, I would maybe try a little harder than Miro versus Daniel Garcia and uh, Roosh versus Dax the Axe or Cash or whichever one he's wrestling. Bald, bald, bald. Dax. That's yeah. right, because they misspelled his name on the <laughs> correct on the advertisement. Isn't that beautiful? Hilarious. And then uh, Ruby and uh, Soraya versus Hikaru Shida and Chris Statlander. Nothing says punting like putting a Soraya match on TV. <laughs> what are you going to do? So uh, Full Gear is coming up Saturday. MJF versus Jay White for the world title on top. The They're trying with Jay White. I'll give him that. They're having him stand tall on every angle, and he's getting a lot of time to talk, which is uh, something... I think he's pretty good at. It. Yeah, and they've they've tried to get the story across. If he hits his finish, MJF cannot kick out. He's gotten multiple visual pinfalls and one real pinfall with his move on MJF. So they've done that. The thing with him walking around with the belt for a month, Weak. I think, has gotten long in the tooth. It's a very classic thing that a guy who's not winning at the pay per view does yes story um so uh and i don't think he's winning at the pay-per-view so i guess that's fine but uh yeah i think he's carried himself like a top guy in a main adventure as you might expect jay white to do because he's jay white but yes as we talked about he transitioned himself to u.s television wrestling uh, very effectively and uh, in a relatively short amount of time so uh will the match be good like I can't really visualize an MJF J White match in my head, <laughs> right? But also, pretty much every main event match MJF has, the crowd goes nuts for because of the way he plays to the crowd in his matches. So I'm sure people will be into it. Yeah, J. Um, what's I gonna say here about J? I was going to try to um, when you think. United States television wrestling. You don't think Jay White's style mm-hmm. is really going to work for this. But uh, it kind of does. I just don't know still after all this time if he's still if he's over yet. And also Juice Robinson somehow <laughs> has overshadowed him in his own faction and is a more entertaining guy and has better taken to television wrestling than Jay White, which... I wouldn't have thought possible six months ago. <laughs> but I just, after all this, is Jay over? I guess is my question. That's a good question. Like, what is, as we often talk about, sometimes you get the big pay-per-view match and it goes well and people are talking about how a star has been made or whatever, and then what are they doing the next week? What are you doing after you beat Chris Jericho and your Orange Cassidy? Are you <laughs> losing a five-minute TNT title match? Or are you actually getting, you know, does does he move on to, I mean, they already did him and Hangman on TV as just kind of a one-off, but do they move him in with another, you know, top baby face? They put him against, they put them against the Blackpool guys who are sometimes heels, sometimes faces, depending on the week. <laughs> um, yeah, where where all of these guys go from here will be, uh, will be crucial, I think, to finding out if, if people give a hoot about the, about the bullet club guys or Jay white specifically. Um, tag team title four way. Lazy. <laughs> Ricky. Oh, well, I guess if you watch collision, it makes sense. Like all these teams have been intermingled and fighting each other for the last 
three weeks or whatever. So it makes sense if you forget the fact that the Young Bucks won a title shot at, at the previous month's pay per view that they never got. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about them in a second. Yep, I, yep, we we'll need, yeah, we need to. We need to get to that. But uh, the tag team title match is Ricky Starks and Big Bill mm-hmm. defending against Rush and Jalistico, uh with Jose the assistant. Happy birthday to Jose the <laughs> uh, versus FTR. Catch Wheeler and Dax Harwood versus Kings of the Black Throne, Malachi Black and Brody King. It's four way for the tag team titles. God bless. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Chris Statlander defending the TBS championship against Julia Hart and Sky Blue in a three way. Sky Blue. Here's what we know <laughs> we know she is a goth now because Julia spit in her face, mm-hmm. and she loves Scooby Doo. That's right. She contains multitudes. Um, I mean, I kind of feel like they're setting up for like a horseman beat down on stat and Sky's going to help Julia win the title, but I don't know. That would be great. Let's do that. Because otherwise, why is it a three way? I guess <laughs> would be my other than oh. to just get another body on television. This random multi-person matches up and down this card. What? <laughs> Fair. <laughs> But it's a it's a good point and one I really hadn't considered, even though that really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I guess because I just haven't put that much thought into it because AEW conditions you not to put that much thought into the women's division. True, very fair. All of what you've said is true. They 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 already did tease her joining Julia, and then she decided against it once before. But it was also to she didn't turn on Willow, but she clearly right. has less nice feelings about statlander so right so yeah. will she turn on uh statlander and and help julia win that's the uh that's that's the closest thing i i can't call it intrigue but you know the closest thing to it yeah i mean it's not bad and it's more involved than most of the st- women's stories they tell mm-hmm. and uh stat it also your uh horseman beat down here makes sense because statlander's beaten both of these women uh mm-hmm. in singles matches on the way to the <laughs> To to the three way. So all right, whatever. That should be great. Uh the Golden Jets and boy, what a run Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho have had as a tag team unit. They've uh brought no more BS Paul White out of retirement <laughs> to get lightly dropped on a uh on the hood of a Hyundai Elantra. Right on his hip. <laughs> right on his surgically repaired hip. <laughs> oh man, I hope Paul White is okay and happy <laughs> why did he why did he do that <laughs> he's trying to get over the next the next big fella because uh aew has not gonna done a great job of getting will hobbs over so <laughs> and that continued <laughs> chris jericho though usually usually front and center anyway uh pay per you <laughs> kenny omega and chris jericho are teaming against the young bucks if the young bucks win then Omega and Jericho have to disband their six-week-old tag team, mm-hmm. the Golden Jets. And if Omega and Jericho win, they get the Young Bucks guaranteed tag team title shot that they won uh, back on October 1st and uh, haven't cashed in because they're never on TV. Mm-hmm. And then this week, the podcasters bullied Tony Khan into booking <laughs> the Young Bucks and basically their hometown uh, the arena 15 minutes from their house on Dynamite uh, ahead of their uh, pay-per-view match here. Um, Hangman Page, rarely around, rarely on television. Mm-hmm. Um, Young Bucks, rarely around, rarely on television. The Young Bucks, being the elite show, has turned into a Brandon Cutler and Colt Cabana video blog, mm-hmm. which sounds like a delightful variety, a wonderful <laughs> variety show. It's also like in clips now, like they don't just do a full show every week. They do a like one day they put up the Colt Cabana, Brandon Cutler, dark match. And then one day they put up uh, Nemeth, whatever he's doing. I don't watch either of them, so I don't know what they're doing, but I'm still subscribed to the channel. So I see those. What the hell's going on with Young Bucks and to a lesser extent, Hangman Page? Great question. Um uh, to your, to add to this, when uh, when Nick Jackson, uh, tw- I believe, put an Instagram post about this match and said something like "friendly competition with Kenny," not you know, 
but Jericho, I don't know about or something like that. And someone uh, snarkily replied, well, gee, friendly competition isn't really something worth charging $50 for on a pay-per-view. And uh, Nick responded, uh, well, it was either that or not work the show or not (laughs) or be left off the show or something to that uh, extent. So I guess we're just uh, creative has nothing for the young bucks right now. (laughs) Which is it's possible, but it's strange given that they just signed for a lot of money. It's true. Uh, unless this is the first iteration of something that, uh, you know, WWE was famous for, for decades, which, you know, you sign them just so they don't go to the other guy. (laughs) And maybe it's less that Tony wants the bucks on his show and more that he just didn't want them going to the other show. Quite possible. Um, that's the best read I have on it. The other, that's the more cha- I, I should say. That's the more charitable to the young bucks read, I think, is that the Booker ain't booking them. That's not their fault. Right. And what do you expect them to do? Uh, they're they're doing, you know, had had a very good match on Dynamite this past week. They, hey, what do you you know what the young bucks generally? I think most people would agree on if there is something they are good at, it is having wrestling matches. <laughs> And they let him have a wrestling match, and it was good. Um, so I don't know. Feel like you could find time across your five hours of of television every week to fit them on to do more wrestling matches. But uh, the other side is what they're they're nineteen ninety nine Holland Nash. They're just checked out. They got their big checks, and they're not doing anything that they don't have to do. That's probably the less charitable. <laughs> version of it is they don't feel like making those towns they don't feel like coming to tv if they're not wrestling they don't uh, they're not uh, their hearts not in the uh in the promotion of the company that they are as far as we know still uh, uh executive vice presidents of yeah they they uh claimed that in an instagram story uh just today they're still still executive vice presidents of this company mm-hmm. Couldn't it just be as simple as, I mean, this doesn't explain the being the elite stuff, mm. except maybe that they're if they're not traveling to TV, there's there's no uh, content for their travel travel log. Right. But um, that if if the shows are being written the day of or a day before. And uh, you don't have the time to get uh, everyone's travel together from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they don't want to get on a plane unless they know they're going to be used. And they only want to work one show a week mm-hmm. because wherever they're going to fly to, it's going to take three days because you fly out one day and then you're at TV the next day and then you fly home the next day. So really one show is a three day travel week and they're rich and they have young families and they don't want to do that. So, Mm -hmm. Hey, call us when you got something (laughs) concrete a week ahead of time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I think one, I think it would be great if a reporter asked, Tony Khan, perhaps at his media scrum. Uh, why have we seen so little of the Young Bucks on television <laughs> for the last two months? I think sure. it would be it would be great. Is he going to answer it? No, of course not. But it would maybe be good to ask the question um, because yeah, you could you can look at it and go, well, they're not getting booked because the booker doesn't want to book them, or the scenario you laid out. They don't want to travel if they don't know they're going to be used, or at least if they're not going to be used in something that they feel is important. Or, like I said, even the even less charitable is they're just they're cashing their checks and they're they don't uh, they don't care anymore. So it's one of those three, you would think. And uh, yeah, it would just be great if uh, some of the reporters in pro wrestling could uh, you know maybe, maybe dig into it. Maybe dig into why any of this is happening and also why uh, FTR suddenly dropped the tag belts to Big Bill and Ricky Starks, who were, as Big Bill says every week on television, were not a friends and not really a tag team when they won the tag belts. (laughs) Yeah. 
uh, just I think there's a little bit more to it than maybe what's been uh, what's been chatted about. And I know AEW is uh, notoriously tight lipped about some of this stuff, or at least tries to be. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It would be it would be interesting to maybe try to dig into this a little deeper than than ha- than has been publicly spoken about. Yep. Uh, Hangman Page versus Horace Strickland in a Texas death match is set for this pay-per-view. Uh, Hangman occasionally on TV. He's on TV more often than the Young Bucks, but sure. um, they've tried with this feud, I guess. They're telling some stories. I My magnum opus about what I don't like about this feud was all in last week's episode, but uh, look, go, little go-home promo they did was fine. Um, and, uh, I didn't know that Swerve had a fiance that left him. So that's, that's fun. That's some added Swerve lore that we can, uh, we can mine in the future. Orange, Orange Cassidy versus John Moxley for the international championship. Running it back from, uh, the very well-received main event of all out, uh, beginning of September there. Mm -hmm. Um, not sure there's a whole lot more to say about that um it'll be a good pro wrestling match mm-hmm. sting darby and uh the radar superstar adam copeland presumably with rick flair in their corner will be taking on christian cage luchasaurus and nick wayne in a uh col- collision ass match mm-hmm. here on pay-per-view as we continue to wind towards sting's retirement and edge versus christian in 2023 the year of our lord mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shida will defend the women's championship against timeless tony storm mariah may is uh possibly being added to this tony act mm-hmm. everyone has uh thoughts on that um everyone's just really horny for mariah may i mm-hmm. think is is what we, we could take away from this tony should probably win the title at some point um Cheetah is always the bridesmaid and never the bride. And um, I'm not sure if you want to do it here or somewhere else. I don't know. But um, Tony is the most pushed character and should probably get the championship here at some point. Yeah. I mean, if there's a if if anyone can be called while uh, while Dr. Britt has been off TV, if there's a if there is a most prominent uh, television character that is a female, then it's then it's Tony Storm. So yeah, might as well have her win the belt, and then you can do uh, whatever it is you're doing with her and and Mariah May. So uh, yeah, that's fine. I I feel for Sheeta, who has uh, this company does not deserve her, um, and that's all I'm going to say. All right, not perverted. Nope, no, never. Too all much right. respect. Yep. Uh, we know this long established woman respecter you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, MJF and a mystery partner defending the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles against the guns on the pre show. Wow. Very exciting. Will it be Joe? Will it be another person? We just don't know. It's got to be Joe. I mean, they've let, literally, literally left no other choice. I mean, the real swerve here would be if it's Wardlow, I guess. Yeah, that would be interesting. I guess. Um, I don't know. Interesting, maybe too strong a word. But you got to set up somebody to be MJF's challenger for that lovely December pay-per-view that's on the horizon. So, right. Whoever that's going to be, you would assume maybe Joe, maybe it's Wardlow, whoever that is. Maybe they they, uh, team with MJF. It's not going to be Roddy or any of his guys. It's not going to be Adam Cole, I wouldn't think. And uh, the acclaimed all got beat up. So it's short list. Yep. Tony has also announced that he's uh, signing one of the best pro wrestlers in the world mm-hmm. uh, on this show. They're coming to Los Angeles to sign their contract. Fightful reports Thursday that it's not Mercedes money. Um, they certainly make it sound like Will Ospreay and Tony's. Uh, a cryptic tweet about the the great wrestler and well known to the audience that he is going to sign at full gear. Um, I don't know. Fightful says it's not Mercedes. 
Um, and you would certainly think that Osprey is not going to uh, make a decision until the end of January or whatever his New Japan deals up. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, uh, it's such a sh- because of the way it was worded <laughs> about how this person is universally like beloved and respected by the W audience. Uh, that does make it like a very short and and one of the best wrestlers in the world or whatever he said. It's a very short list of people that you could produce that would not be seen as a, as a disappointment. Osprey's a weird one because he is on AEW television, not all the time, but he's been on AEW TV. So it doesn't feel like it would be that big of a, like it will be a big deal once people make, once he makes it clear he's a free agent. Like, I don't know if, the AEW audience at large knows that. <laughs> right. It's like, okay, he's just going to work AEW more. He's already worked AEW. I don't know. But uh, I mean, yeah, it would be a coup, I guess, to get him to sign uh, and for New Japan to let him sign uh, before his deal was up. But uh, yeah, if it's not Mercedes, like there's most of the people who are on WWE deals. Are not it's not past the 90 days. I suppose it could be like Mustafa Ali or somebody that was on an NXT deal if they had the shorter uh non-compete clause. I guess he would be available, but uh, also I think that 90 days only applies if you want to get paid for your full 90 yeah, days. I, say, I know Chelsea Green definitely got out of her <laughs> the last time she was fired because she worked impact before her 90 days was up. And it was like, yeah, she just asked if she could be let out of it and they said yes yeah so if they're like if you want to get paid for all 90 of those days but if AEW just says okay well what, what were you going to make for those 90 days and it's like well mm-hmm. I'm going to you know I was like well okay well, we'll add that to your contract it's not, it's not impossible that the, the 90 the 90 days thing is it could be worked around that's all true. I'm trying to say very true which would then open you up to Ziggler Swear to God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> like those those were the three options, right? It's Ziggler, it's Osprey, and or it's Mercedes. Um, you you would think. And boy, what a what a trio. What a and trio you, that is. Yeah, and you think Ziggler could go to uh WWE to say hey look I gave you 17 years can you can you let me out 30 days early or whatever right yeah I feel like that's not impossible under the 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 new regime it's maybe a little bit less spiteful than <laughs> sure uh, or cares less about that sort of thing yeah um yeah we'll we'll see boy I I Dolph Ziggler it was on television for so long that I think people would react to him if he comes out as a big signing and also just the novelty of seeing a guy who's never been anywhere but WWE on a non WWE show like Adam Copeland had on the last show. Um, I'm not, I don't think people are going to boo is what I'm saying, but uh, God, I can't, I don't, don't, don't freak Dolph. We're, we're like, 11 or 12 years past the point where he was the darling, right? (laughs) People will make fun of the people Tony Khan cares most about, which are people that, uh, you know, tweet, tweet about his shows and, and Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer and and whoever else, uh, uh, the tastemakers have long since moved on from singing the praises of Dolph Ziggler. And I think would see this as a, dramatic over promise if you promise one of the best wrestlers in the world and a universally beloved talent and you pr- produce Nick Nemeth yeah could happen alright uh, uh, anything else you want to get into no I think that about wraps things up alright well enjoy full gear enjoy the head to head show it's Friday everyone Till next time I meet and I'm Liam we'll be back next week with the Thanksgiving Spectacular and more stories from the rest of the world Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Um, I... 
I uh, I finished Matthew Perry's audio book. Mm-hmm. And my, my big takeaways, that guy was on Friends. And uh, man, that guy loved drugs. <laughs> I think those are two undeniable, uh, undeniable <laughs> facts. I don't think he himself would have disputed ever, either of the uh, either of the things that you just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, now it's like you've read uh, the audio books, also. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of, not a lot. Of, the only thing I knew that that book, while maybe it's interesting if you're like a Friends fan or a fan of that era of television. Sure. Uh, I knew there wasn't going to be anything too interesting in it because the only thing that like went viral when the book came out, like those excerpts they put out to the the deadlines at Hollywood Reporters and whatever, yes. so they yes. just people just got mad because he his example of a celebrity he wished had died instead of like one of his friends was Keanu Reeves. Correct. And it's like, well, that's outdated because, you know, the internet decided about 12 years ago that Keanu Reeves is great and uh, they sort of treat him like a Make-A-Wish kid now the way they treat Brendan Fraser. So you yes. can't, can't say anything bad about Keanu Reeves anymore. Correct. Like Matthew Perry was just picking a random name out of a hat and perhaps thinking of a, an actor who was somewhat maligned for his uh, <laughs> lack of talent or see, perceived lack of talent. In the era when Matthew Perry last paid attention to pop culture. (laughs) Correct. Exactly. Exactly. But I was like, if that's all you got to like get get people buzzing, I don't uh, I don't think there's gonna be a lot in there if you're not a a a must see TV super fan. Yeah. I try to keep on keeping on. 